what we want to do. This here might not be for you. This what we want to be. Up in the sand in the sun. Can is a gun. Yo. Alright, we're continuing with Hyper Thursday with Kur and I as requested. Alright, so Kur and I straight up is an assassin. So look at let's look at her kit. Let's look at what she does. Now get into her item build. Now her item build is a little bit more flexible than a lot of other assassins, but I'll explain why as best I can, as quickly as I can later. Right now let's look at her standard attack. She swings that gigantic kunai on her back and just lays and lays into people. So what is her A? Her shuriken sweep. She swings her shuriken to do applicable damage to enemies three times. Alright, so she slides forward, as you saw, and she sweeps it. Now, if you catch them on the tail end of that, you're still going to hit them with all three strikes. So there's no way to actually miss those three strikes, unless you miss the whole thing entirely. Now, you want to hold the direction that you want to go to do the slide. If you don't hold anything, you will not slide. You will just do that. So it's important to remember, if you're in the middle of a combo and someone's walking away and you're not holding which direction you want to go, you're just going to spin a circle directly in front of you. <clears throat> now let's look at her passive. Her passive is Stealth Assassin. Lone enemy hypers within 600 units or 1,600 units of current. Current I suffer the following effects. Um, are no allies within 600 units. So they have no allies within 600 units of them, and they are within 1600 units of you. They suffer the current the this current effect, so that the, these debuffs basically. It decreases defense by 17 up to 35. So she is basically an isolation killer, meaning she picks people off. If someone's out of place, out of lane, or in their own jungle, she is great for going in there and killing them. That's legitimately what she does. It's actually her goal to pick people off. She assassinates people. Her Q, Vicious Wind. She slings a kunai at the enemy dealing applicable damage. So let's see it. She throws a kunai. Now she does have one of the, she's one of the few hypers that does have a skill that she can do in the air. So if she's in the air, she will throw another kunai. Now at the same time, in the air she throws three seeking, enemy seeking kunais dealing applicable damage to the enemy. If multiple kunais at the same enemy, Damage is reduced by 70%. Now, as you can see, I'm sorry. As you can see, she does have a mark above her head. That's because of my passive. That That's a visible marker to show that if I, she, I'm near enough to her, she's alone. She's going to get, you know, she's going to have that debuff effect. Essentially, she'll probably die. Now, Sonya, you might not want to go in on her, even if you're alone, unless you know you outdamage her, because she can do some work on you. Anywho, so Kitsune Leap. Alright, Kitsune Leap, however you want to pronounce it, doesn't really matter to me. Kurt I dashes in the direction of the directional key press. So again, you're going to need to hold the direction that you want to go. Um, the killing blow. After the leap, she pr press the skill key while dashing or without directional key to make Kurt and I slice to either side, doing applicable damage and stunning them. So the big part of this is its movement, right? It's in and out. It's a way to get somewhere. Now that does not hurt them. This is important to note. That dash right there does not hurt them. Now it can be activated again anytime during to make that attack happen. And you saw the kunais go to either side of me. Now if the kunais land that I use, they get stunned on either side. Well, that was, that was a little too close. There we go, on either side, just to kind of show. Now if you press your standard attack button, it does not cancel the leap. It doesn't cancel the leap at all. Now if you don't press any directional button, you simply do the stab. So that's important to know. If you're not going to press the direction button with it, you're just going to do the stun stab. So if you meant to do the leap, it's going on full cooldown once you do that stab. Alrighty. So, E, Shadow Step. Kur and I enter stealth for 13 seconds, granting the following effects. Regular attacks trigger ambush. Move speed is plus 10%. Max move speed plus 250 Using another skill besides Katsune Leap, or taking, or I'm sorry, taking at least 25% max health damage in stealth. Kurt and I cha charges forward and does 146, this is explaining ambush, um, damage to the enemy and stuns them for 0.6 seconds. Alright, so regular attack triggers ambush, so this is what we're going to try and do. That's ambush, so that's, just so you know, that's how that looks. So if you're in your stealth, and again, just like with uh, Rita, people can still see you if they're paying close enough attention. There, that's your ambush. Now, good thing about that is, so you stealth in, right, and you're quick enough to not be caught. You ambush, and then you got another stun right out, right out of the gate. So let's look at what her actual, um, 
ultimate is. Let's level her up. Let's look at it. It is called Black Claw. Krennite grabs the enemy within 280 units in front of her and does 133 whatever your applicable damage is based off your items, then leaps into the air and smashes the enemy into the ground, doing an additional 449 plus 15% of lost health. So you do additional damage based on how low your health is. Since Kurenai is squishy, she will probably always be kind of low on health at the, by the end of the fight. Now, you down the enemy for one second. The shockwave crashes down. The shockwave from the crash down does an additional 224 damage to enemies within 350 units and downs them as well for one second. Now, this basically looks like Primary Lotus if you're familiar with Naruto, but it's been around for a long time. So, I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'll show you again. Basically, she wraps around them, and that wrap actually does damage too. The grapple itself does damage. And once she is she lands, they get down. Now what it didn't state is that you can move with it. If you hold the direction that you want to go, just like pretty much everything with Kur and I, you will go in that direction. So if you're trying to pull this person out of their team, you can do that. You can grab them and pull them back towards your team. Or if you need to get their team down, you can grab them and throw them into their team. I wouldn't recommend that unless you know for a fact you have people following, following up with you. So to refresh, we have our kunais, we have our kunai on the ground, we have our sweep, we have our flip stun, we have our stealth ambush, and then we have our ultimate. Alright, so there's a few combos that you can do. The kunais are just really, really good for picking, picking people off or getting them, just kind of getting them low before you get to them. So you can slide in. You can slide in a roll in, flip in, however you want to put it. Get a stun off. You have your ult. You got him there. And it stuns everybody on, that gets touched with it, so it's not just like a singular stun. You can stealth in. Do your surprise attack. Stun again. Ult there. You can always just standard attack. Now, all of her combos, all of her uh, skills can be chained together. So, you, again, you can normal attack. Kunai. See? It's just like that. Um, I'll show you again. You can normal attack, kunai, then you got your stun, then you got your A, and then you did your surprise ambush attack, which was another stun, because you activated your E in between strikes. So A, E, ambush. See? And of course, you can proc the um, ultimate off of any, any stun. Now, mind you, you may want to make sure that you're close enough to him, because otherwise you're just going to do that. So my best, my best, uh, th the thing that I always keep in mind is, you know, have like in your head, there may be a square in front of you and you can reach them. Otherwise, you're going to miss. All right, now let's talk about the item build. Slaughter is Greaves. Again, just like with Rita, because this is an actual assassin. So I get some life steal and move speed right out of the cut. Then the plasma cutter to do the pick off damage, attack, defense, penetration, mana, plus 15. And then um, after you attack them, while attacking, inflicts 70 additional damage per second for 3 seconds. Dragon's Bane, attack, crit rate, crit rate, attack, crit rate, attack, and then increases damage, or uh, increases critical damage by an additional 20%. Now her unique item, Iron Sand Kunai, it's attack, mana regen, critical rate, attack, mana regen, critical rate, and enhances Vicious Wind, which is the Kunai throw at Q. Um, on hit, decreases the enemy move speed by 30% for 3 seconds. Multiple hits on the same enemy. Ch um, enemy change decreases from 70% to 50%. So if all three kunais hit the same enemy, then it de only decreases by 50% instead of 70%, which is really good. Hunter's Claw. Attack, crit rate, attack, crit rate, attack. Or, I'm sorry, and then crit rate, move speed. While attacking, move speed is, is increased by 10% for 3 seconds. And then finally, when enemy health is below 50%, increase damage inflicted by 10%. Then Grasp of Death. This is another unique item that enhances the Black Claw, which is her ultimate. It reduces the cooldown of it for, by 10 seconds and increases the damage of it by 10% of health lost. So it's just doing more damage based on lost health and it increases the, uh, or decreases the cooldown of it by 10 seconds. Kurenai is a great in and out assassin. You're going to hear that a lot when I cover assassins because there are some assassins that don't do as well with it, but she's great with going in and out for different reasons. She can go in and stun, and if she needs to, dash out. 
she can go in with her ambush and stun, and if she needs to, dash out. Or she doesn't even have to get in and out like that. She can go in, stun, ult, pull them out. So she's out with the person that she went in with, or she went in to go get. That's one of her big key points, kind of like Perseus. I might cover him again later, but I do have a video on him for when he releases for you guys on the Xbox. So anyway, this was my really quick guide, or tried to be quick guide, for Kerr and I and Hyper Universe. Hope that you liked it, guys. Have a great day, morning, noon, or night. Whatever it is, wherever you are, get a good cup of coffee, tea, mocha, water, whatever it is you're drinking to make your day a little bit better. As I always say, build how you want, play how you want, find what play style suits you. This is just a simple introduction and a simple guide to how I play the character and what works for me and what helps me through. Use it as a stepping stone and play the best hyper that you can, my friends. I'll catch you on the next one.